morning, everybody. Welcome to my front porch today. We are in Enoch chapter 70 and 71 today. And this kind of ends up a section of the book where we were looking at these parables of Enoch. Uh, the rest of the third parable ended up in chapter 69. And here this starts out, Enoch chapter 70, verse 1. And it came to pass after this that his name, that would be Enoch's name, during his lifetime was raised aloft to that son of man and to the Lord of spirits from amongst those who dwell on the earth. And he was raised aloft on the chariots of the spirit and his name vanished among them. Now when it says his name vanished among them, it's speaking of his person, his, his human being on the earth disappeared from among the people on the earth. So he was like raptured, if you will, into the heavenly realm. And it says there that he was raised to the Son of Man and to the Lord of Spirits. That's Son and Father there. That's the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus Christ there. The Son of Man. Now, there's quite a few things in those first two verses. The chariots of the Spirit that's said there in verse 2. That's interesting. The chariots of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit? Maybe? Now, we see something similar. Of course, later on in 2 Kings chapter 2, when Elijah is taken up by a whirlwind into heaven. And there in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, it says there, And it came to pass as they still went on and talked. That would be Elijah and his protege, Elisha. Okay, that they went on and talked. It says that, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. Now, the biggest difference here is you might have caught it Enoch says the chariot of the spirit or chariots okay it's plural chariots of the spirit now the big difference is there there's no fire mentioned there uh, from the passage in 2nd Kings it says a chariot of fire and horses of fire this is chariot a singular chariot all right so there's a little bit of a difference there but there's a very close connection because they were both living when this happened and they were taken up by a chariot into the heavens. Now here, after verse 2, the context suddenly changes from third person to first person because in the first two verses it's talking about Enoch in the third person. It's saying him and speaking of Enoch like it's somebody else narrating it. Now in verse 3, as it goes on here, then suddenly it's Enoch speaking. Okay, And from that day, I was no longer numbered amongst them. Amongst who? Among the people of earth. He was no longer numbered amongst them. And he set me between the two winds. When it says he there... Who's that talking about? I'm not sure. Uh, it could be the Son of Man. It could be the Lord of Spirits. Or maybe it could be an angel, because as he goes on, there's an angel there with him. He set me between the two winds, between the north and the west. In the northwest. The northwest of what? The northwest of heaven? I don't know. This is, he's in the spirit now. 
where the angels took the cords to measure for me the place for the elect and righteous. Okay, now if you remember, this was back in Enoch chapter 61, where we saw these angels with these cords, measuring cords. Okay? And they called it the measure of righteousness. In Enoch chapter 61, verses 1 through 3, it said, And I saw in those days how long cords were given to those angels, and they took to themselves wings and flew. And they went towards the north. And I asked the angel, saying unto him, Why have those angels taken these cords and gone off? And he said unto me, They have gone to measure. And the angel who went with me said unto me, These shall bring the measures of the righteous and the ropes of the righteous to the righteous, that they may stay themselves on the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. So these measures were comparing the righteousness of one group of people with the righteousness of another. And back when I did chapter 61, we talked about that. And um, I really think that it's measuring the righteousness of those in the spirit with the righteousness of those that are still in the earth. That's just my idea. I'm not sure. But he says that's where he's at. He's in the place where the angels took the cords to measure. Verse 4. And there I saw the first fathers and the righteous, who from the beginning dwell in that place. Okay, now, first fathers. We can only assume here that maybe he's talking about Adam, Seth, Enos, you know, the first fathers. Because by this time, Enoch was translated when he was 365, 365 years old. Now, at that time, many of those had already passed. I'm pretty sure, I know Adam was gone by then, and probably Seth and his son Enos uh, they were probably past already. So that's what he's talking about. The first fathers, you know, his ancestor that are there, and we can only assume that this is paradise, you know. All right, now that's the end of chapter 70. It's very short. It's just four verses. Now this is chapter 71. And it came to pass after this that my spirit was translated his spirit was translated it was changed in some way and it ascended into the heavens and I saw the holy sons of God so obviously before that he was in some type of intermediary place All right, maybe in the second heaven I'm not sure but it says here that he ascended into the heavens and I saw the holy sons of God. They were stepping on flames of fire. Their garments were white and their raiment. And their faces shone like snow. All right. Holy sons of God. Um, archangels? Maybe. Later on he mentions archangels and Michael comes into the narrative so maybe that's who he's talking about um, sons of God could be maybe other angels angels of the presence I don't know but I'm I'm pretty sure that these these are angels some type of angelic beings there their garments were white and their raiment and they shone white now white always symbolizes the righteousness, the righteousness of the saints, okay? Now he goes on in verse 2, And I saw two streams of fire, and the light of that fire shone like hyacinth, and I fell on my face before the Lord of Spirits. All right. 
He saw streams of fire. In Daniel, chapter 7, in verses 9 and 10, Daniel is having a vision of the heavenly realm. And he says something very similar. He says his throne, and speaking about the throne of God, his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. All right, so that's similar. Uh, it says a fiery stream issued. Now, Enoch said that he saw two streams of fire coming from him. And he says the light of it, or the color of it, was like hyacinth. Now, hyacinth is kind of a bluish hue, a bluish purple. Verse 3, And the angel Michael, one of the archangels, seized me by my right hand and lifted me up and led me forth into all the secrets. And he showed me all the secrets of righteousness. Secrets? I don't know. We just don't know. It's not explained here what these secrets are, really. Uh, he alludes to some of them in different places, but they're not really s described specifically. Well, you know, they're secrets, right? So, it's possible that it's something that he's not allowed to tell. And Michael showed this to him. He says, all the secrets, all the secrets of righteousness. All right? And he showed me all the secrets of the ends of the heaven. The ends of the heaven. The outer limits. Uh, is he talking about the heaven of the sky? Or is he talking about the spiritual heaven? Not really sure. We don't know. He showed me all the secrets of the ends of the heaven. And all the chambers of of all the stars and all the luminaries whence they proceed before the face of the holy ones okay now that language there if that seems archaic to you you know if you think well you know they were ancient people he just didn't understand science he didn't know what he was talking about now if that seems archaic to you uh, you're thinking from a materialistic mindset there. You know? Uh, this whole thing is spiritual, not physical. We have to keep that in mind whenever we're reading this type of text. Uh, this is spiritual. These are spiritual words. Because he's in the heavenly realms here when he's talking about this. And we discussed this in uh, the last video, maybe the one before. We've discussed it in quite a few, actually. That there is spiritual influence and power behind everything that we see in this physical world. This physical world is corruptible. It's, it doesn't last. It passes away. These are all uh, correspondences or images of things that exist in the spiritual realm. Okay? So, in that scripture there, he's talking about the chambers of the stars and, and where they proceed before the face of the holy ones and all that. Well, that's spiritual. Okay, let's go on. Verse 5. And he translated my spirit into the heaven of heavens. And I saw there, as it were... A structure built of crystals, and between those crystals, tongues of living fire. All right, now there's crystal mentioned a few different places in Scripture, not that much really. I looked it up, and I think it's only mentioned four or five times, and it's always in relationship with uh, describing something heavenly. 
uh, the crystal sea before the throne, and the, the, firmament, the firmament like a crystal. And uh, it's always heavenly things, you know. But here, he says that it's a structure that he saw there, built of crystal, and between those crystals, tongues of living fire. Now, there's only one passage in Scripture that talks about tongues of fire. And you probably know what it is, right? The tongues of living fire, Acts chapter 2, verse 3, there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. This is when the Holy Spirit came upon the church in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, of course. And what they saw there manifested in the natural from the Spirit looked like tongues of fire that set upon each one of them. And this is recognized pretty much by most people to symbolize the Holy Spirit. You know, the presence of the Holy Spirit. So here where it says that he saw between these crystals tongues of living fire. I would think that this is something to do with the Spirit of God holding this structure together whatever it is he doesn't really say he calls it a house or a structure he called it a structure here but later on as we go on you'll see that he calls it a house now notice at the beginning of that verse also that it says he translated my spirit into heaven who's he? don't know. He translated my spirit into heaven. I don't think he's talking about Michael there. I would not think that Michael would be able to translate his spirit. You know, I don't know whether that type of authority would be given to the angels. Uh, he translated my spirit is maybe speaking about the Lord of spirits himself. Or maybe even the Son of Man. That might be. So let's go on here. Verse 6. And my spirit saw the girdle which girt that house of fire. See, there it is. He calls it a house here. The girdle which girt that house of fire. And on its four sides were streams full of living fire. And they girt that house. What he means is they were surrounding the house streams full of living fire. What does he mean by living fire? It's spiritual, that's for sure. <laughs> and this is what is surrounding this crystal structure. Okay? And round about were seraphim, cherubic, and ophanin. And these are they who sleep not and guard the throne of his glory. The throne of God. All right? Now, or the throne of the Son of Man. Because as we've seen earlier, he sits on the throne of his glory. And of course, God, <laughs> Father and Son and Spirit are one, right? Anyhow, where it says there, seraphim, I thought that's interesting. We usually see it ending in an M. Here it ends in an N. And we know what the seraphim is. It's a, it's a form of angelic being. We know that. Uh, cherubim, here it says cherubic. All right. And they cover the throne of God. Now, it mentions Ophan in here. Now, it mentioned them earlier on in the book, and I brought it up then. I don't know if you remember, but what that means, Ophanin, it comes from the Hebrew word Ophan. And what that means is wheel. Yeah, it means wheel. So I believe what this Ophanin is it are the wheels that we see in the book of Ezekiel. You know, the wheel within a wheel that has the spirit in itself and they move and, and go straight forward and all that 
they're separate from the, from the cherubim or the seraphim. The wheels are separate. And they're called the Ophanin. And they're full of eyes. We see that in Ezekiel also. All right. <laughs> Verse 8. And I saw angels who could not be counted a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand encircling that house. And Michael and Raphael and Gabriel and Phanuel and the holy angels who are above the heavens go in and out of that house. Above the heavens. I would assume he's talking about the second heaven. You know, above the firmament in the third heaven. In the area where God dwells. You know, the third heaven. I believe that's what he's talking about here. The holy angels who are above the heavens, they go in and out of that house, this crystalline structure. All the holy angels there. He says it's 10,000 times 10,000. So how big is this house, this crystal house? And that may not be relevant in the spirit. Maybe 10,000 times 10,000 could, could fit in something that looks much smaller we don't really know. But all of these, all of these angels he sees going in, encircling the house, and going in and out of it. Alright, verse 9. And they came forth from that house, and Michael, and Gabriel, Raphael, and Phanuel, and many holy angels without number. See, they came out of this house, all right? And with them, the head of days, God himself, his head white and pure as wool, and his raiment indescribable. Just as indescribable. He doesn't even try to describe it. Now, when it says head of days here, that's unique. That's a unique name there, calling him the head of days. That's unique to the book of Enoch. That's not anywhere else in scripture. In the book of Daniel, he's called the ancient of days, which was similar to this. Uh, but there are several other phrases. The head of days is unique to the book of Enoch. So is the Lord of spirits. That's unique to the book of Enoch. Uh, that actual phrase, Lord of Spirits, is only mentioned in one other place, and that's in 2 Maccabees, where he's called that one time. And elect one, of course, in speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, the elect one, we only see that in the book of Enoch. Verse 11, And I fell on my face, and my whole body became relaxed. And my spirit was transfigured, and I cried with a loud voice. This is this is like being prostrate before the Lord. Uh, in the modern vernacular, slain in the spirit. Okay, <laughs> something like that. He fell on his face. He didn't fall backwards though, like they do. He fell forward on his face, and we see that in other parts of Scripture. You know, at the dedication of the temple. And things like that. You see the priests falling on their faces. And we see it in Daniel. And just different places throughout scripture we see that. Uh, when holy men of God were overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord. You know. I fell on my face and my whole body became relaxed. And my spirit was transfigured. And I cried with a loud voice. Right, now there's a dot, dot, dot there. That means there's something missing. With the spirit of power, and blessed, and glorified, and extolled. Alright, so it's not that he cried with a loud voice with the spirit of power. Maybe. But that dot 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 signifies that something is missing there. Uh, R.H. Charles said that there's some words there that are lost. Right before that phrase, with the spirit of power. 
So that's a mystery there. Verse 12. And these blessings which went forth out of my mouth were well pleasing before that head of days. God was pleased with him. And that head of days came with Michael and Gabriel, Raphael and Phanuel, thousands and ten thousands of angels without number. All right. Now, right here, there is a missing passage here. All right. And R.H. Charles, in his translation here, he tells us, he says, Lost passage wherein the Son of Man was described as accompanying the head of days. And Enoch asked one of the angels concerning the Son of Man as to who he was. All right? And this part here is missing. But if we go on here then in verse 14, now keep that in mind, that in verse 13 there it said that the head of days came with the four angels there, with Michael, Gabriel, Phanuel, and Raphael, and thousands of angels without number. And then the missing part says that the Son of Man came with them also. Okay? And Enoch asks him who the Son of Man is. He's curious. Verse 14. And he, the angel, came to me and greeted me with his voice and said unto me, This is the Son of Man who is born unto righteousness. And righteousness abides over him, and the righteousness of the head of days forsakes him not. So it seems like we really aren't missing a whole lot there. That's the answer as to who he is. The part that we're missing is where the Son of Man comes in with the head of days and the angels, and Enoch asks who he is. Then in verse 14, we get the answer to Enoch answering him as to who this Son of Man is. And he doesn't really say specifically. I mean, he doesn't name him by name, but he says that he's born unto righteousness, and righteousness abides over him, and the righteousness of the head of days forsakes him not. And he said unto me, He proclaims unto thee peace in the name of the world to come. For from hence has proceeded peace since the creation of the world. And so shall it be unto thee forever and forever and ever. All right. Now, something interesting there is we see that the, the Son of Man proclaims unto Enoch peace in the name of the world to come world to come? Uh, the kingdom of God? Right? That's what I would guess. Peace in the name of the world to come, where righteousness dwells, and only righteousness. And all shall walk in his ways, in the ways of the Son of Man. Now see, back at this time when this was written, people would really be puzzled and not know who this was. We know who it is. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, and we know what his ways are. And all shall walk in his ways, since righteousness never forsaketh him. With him will be their dwelling places. Our dwelling places. With him will be their dwelling places. And with him their heritage. And they shall not be separated from him forever and ever and ever for all eternity now where do we see that in scripture we actually see that in quite a few places right one place specifically uh, is the words of the son of man himself the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 14 verses 2 and 3 he says in my father's house are many mansions, dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. <laughs> Hallelujah. Forever and ever and ever, Enoch said. Yeah. Verse 17. And so, there shall be length of days with that Son of Man, and the righteous shall have peace and an upright way in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> well, if that isn't something to look forward to, I don't know what is. Why would we live any other way than to live for Him? To strive for righteousness and to dedicate our lives and everything that's within us to Him. Right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together with my friends. Lord, I ask that these videos would be a blessing to your people. Lord, I pray that eyes would be opened, that hearts <laughs> would be softened, and that people will be drawn to you, Lord. Maybe those that are listening that maybe don't know you will be drawn to you. Lord, I just give you all the glory in all of these efforts, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Well, we're moving right along. I will be back next week in chapter 72 of the book of Enoch. It takes a little bit of a turn there. And he gets into things about the heavenly luminaries and things like that. And I love you all, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.